I don't okay. see it. I don't see it. Can you, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, there it is, yeah. Okay, so very good. Let me get going. So uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, what a load cell is, and uh, that leads into uh, talk about a uh, Wheatstone Bridges. So, uh, you know, just what I'm going to do is why I'm doing this, what a Wheatstone is, uh, what load cell strain gauges are. I've got uh, some measurements and some simulations, and then I'll talk about how to use a uh, Wheatstone Bridge for measuring measuring SWR. So uh, again, it's my classic disclaimer. You know, I'm not a guru on this. This is uh, something I did out of need, and it's not a tutorial. It's more of a log. And I'll quote uh, Charlie Morris. You know, this is a log of my journey, right or wrong. So, you know, if I misstate in, in anything, uh, you know, don't hold me to it. I'm not an engineer. So how I started, you know, doing this, because I crashed a lot of airplanes and helis and stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, some of it was due to the aircraft being underpowered. So what I needed uh, to do was to be able to measure the thrust of a propeller uh, on an uh, airplane to make sure the airplane wasn't underpowered and it won't crash. Uh, won't crash. So I had to build this uh, thrust thrust measurement bench. And in the end, this is what the final product looked like. So here I've got two types of uh, measuring stations. One here, you could see the motor attached, a propeller. Uh, this is my controller to control the speed of the propeller and also measure the, the current draw and wattage consumed by the motor. Uh, this black box here, it's actually in a printed, uh, 3D printed case and it's basically a scale. All it is is just a scale, just your standard digital scale, except I built it out of an Arduino and a, a two by 20 display or two by 16. I can't remember if it's 16 or 20 display. And uh, both of these use something called a load cell. And here you could see the load cell there and you can see the load cell there. And that's used to measure the weight, the thrust that uh, these motors are uh, what the propellers are are generating. Um, so before I start talking about the load cell, I, we need to talk a little bit about a Wheatstone bridge. I believe probably you guys will know what this is and probably know a lot more than me about a Wheatstone bridge. But basically all it is, it's four resistors uh, similar to a full bridge diode. So when I look at this, it's it's basically the same as a full bridge diode. Um, or a full bridge rectifier. So in this case, you've got uh, four resistors uh, uh, connected in this fashion. You, you feed a voltage in uh, at two points. And then, so if I feed a voltage here uh, with respect to ground here, that's my V in. Then this point is a voltage divider because R1 and R2 forms a voltage divider. And then R2 and R4 forms a voltage divider here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep, no okay. So it forms a voltage divider. And if all four of these resistors are the same, the voltage across here would be zero. Because uh, if they're all the same, this point would be half the voltage of here. If R2 and R4 are the same, it's a voltage divider. This voltage will be half. And if R1 and R3 uh, is the same voltage as R2 and R4, that's also voltage divided here. That'll be half. And the voltage difference across here is zero. So that's what a Wheatstone bridge is. And here's a classic case of using a Wheatstone bridge where you've got a unknown resistor and you're trying to figure out what that resistance is. You know, you would have a variable resistor here. Tune this resistor until the voltage across the bridge is zero. Once that voltage there is zero, then you know R2 has to be equal to Rx. Now, one of the reasons you would do this to measure Rx is that this is temperature tolerant. If I was to just to take, this was a very small resistance I'm measuring, and I use an ohmmeter to go and measure it, or I pass, you know, a current through it, and I measure the voltage, 
uh, if this gets, if this, depending on temperature, this might change and you may not be able to get a uh, fairly precise reading of Rx. But in this fashion, all the resistors will be affected by temperature in the same way. And so you're getting a little bit of uh, temperature tolerance. So um, I've got a little video here I made showing some measurements I made. And uh, let me just hide this. Okay, and uh, this diagram here is just got, I can be referring to it. So here's the load cell I'm using. It's called a four beam, um, a four wire shear, because it's like a shear, you know, like uh, like a pair of scissors. You're shearing, so you're trying to shear this point here by applying um, a weight to one side and not the other side. The other side stationary. This side has a weight. So it's a shear across here. And so you're measuring the shear and it uses four wires. So the way the four wires work is red and black are power. Here, the excitation, you see here's your bridge, because this is actually a bridge. So it's got, it, this forms a Wheatstone bridge, right? Um, that's embedded in the um, uh, load cell. And so your red and black are these two wires here, which are feeding a voltage across the uh, Wheatstone bridge. And then the white and green, it shows in yellow. I had to make it yellow because you can't show white on white. So I made it yellow and green, that's your output. So there you're gonna be measuring the output voltage based on the strain. So a um, strain gauge, all it is, it's just a little thin film and it's got a, tra a, a copper trace going across it. It's like a copper wire going across it, very thin copper wire. And it goes back and forth, back and forth to create a, uh, um, a length of wire because that length of wire will have a small resistance. Now, as this, this film is stretched or it's, it's under a, a tension or a shear or compression, the length of wire here changes and there's a very small resistance coming out. Or there's a very small resistance seen. So this, so this is why you need to use a Wheatstone bridge, you know, to measure that small resistance here. And if we were to just go and, you know, pass a current through and measure the voltage across here, if this gets warm or cold, the resistance is gonna change as well because that wire is gonna uh, shrink or stretch based on temperature. So you can't really measure this accurately uh, just directly. That's why you need to use the Wheatstone bridge. So, and again, here's uh, just this diagram here and uh, I'll be referring to it in a second, but You've got your excitation. They call it a, a e, e plus and E minus. It's just basically your voltage. You're applying a voltage here, voltage here, and you're measuring the, the, the differential voltage across here. And once the bridge is detuned, all the resistances are, or a resistance has changed, this voltage across here is no longer zero. And uh, that is proportional to the strain being applied to the, uh, uh, load cell. So here now I'm going to measure the resistances in the uh, on the load cell, and I'll just pause it there. So what I've done, there's my load cell there, and you can see the green and white wire and the red and black wire. So I've just connected alligator clips, green to green, white to white, red to red, black to black, and I'm just going to measure the resistances across the various pairs here. Okay, and notice that's set to uh, two kilo ohms scale, right? So here I'm measuring the resistance across the red and black. So here's the red and black. So I'm measuring the res resistance across here, which is this pair of resistance re resistors in series with this pair of resistors in series, the parallel combination of those. So I'm getting uh, almost 1K. So now I'm going across white and green. 
So it's yellow, green to red. Recording is on. Recording is on. I'm going from green to red, which is this resistance, this resistor here, in parallel with the series of this resistance, this and this. So this in parallel with these three resistors, and I'm seeing 748 ohms. Same thing for white and black, which is shown as yellow here. So I'm seeing 747, the same uh, resistance. So now I'm gonna apply a voltage of plus five volts and the white and green are gonna be connected to my voltmeter. And I don't know if you could see it, but the scale there is set on millivolts. I think it's 200 millivolts. Milla, not volts, so that's millivolts. So it shows zero right now because the bridge is balanced. There's no strain and uh, all the resistances are equal. So the voltage across here is zero. And I'm showing that's five volts feeding the bridge. So now I'm gonna apply a strain to the bridge, to the uh, uh, load cell. And you can see I'm getting a small voltage. I'm seeing a small voltage across the output. And just basically a few millivolts, very, very small uh, voltage. So now I'm gonna apply a known weight to the load cell and we're gonna see what happens. So this can is full of water and it's coming out to be about 600 grams. I attach it to the load cell and I'm gonna hang it from the load cell. And I know Kevin is probably yawning because uh, he deals with these strain gauges all the time with uh, his equipment. So there I've got it hanging down. And so that's uh, the load cells being deformed. And so I'm seeing about 2.1 millivolts on the output there. And it's minus because it depends which way it, uh, whether it's in tension or, or compression, right? So if we go on from the video, we look at the resistances I measure, 997, 748. So I got 997 with, uh, for example, R2 between red and uh, black. I got 997, which is R2 uh, plus R4 in parallel with R1 and R3. And the resistance white and black, which is these two, it's R4 in parallel with R2, R1 and R3. So R4 in parallel with R1 plus R2 plus R3. But if R1, R2, and R3, and R4 is equal, then you could do a little bit of math and you come up with R is 997 in the case of the um, red and black. And for the white and black, it's coming up to 997. So in fact, all resistances are the same, are in fact the same. And so for my load cell, I have the, the resistance is 997 ohms. So I only have a couple more slides and, and then I'm done. Uh, so from the video, we measured V out was 2.1 millivolts for 600 grams. It was negative, but ignore the, the negative sign uh, for 600 grams. So if the voltage is 2.1 millivolts for 600 grams, then it's 3.5 microvolts per gram or 0.286 grams per microvolt. So for example, if the V out was uh, 0.5 uh, millivolts, then the weight applied to the to this uh, load cell is 143 grams, which makes sense because 0.5 millivolts is about a quarter of that. And so about a quarter of that is coming out to be about 143 grams. So um, in this case, you know, measuring 2.1 millivolts and 0.5 uh, millivolts you, with a microcontroller, it you can't do it. It's just too small. You need some kind of amplification. So there's a chip called the HX777 amplifier, which has embedded a 24-bit ADC. And this is by far the most popular chip used for digital scales. And there's a breakout board you can get on uh, from China. It costs a couple bucks. I think I got five of them for a few dollars. Uh, they're, 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 they're not expensive. But you can see it's broken out for the excitation, for the voltage to the Wheatstone bridge or to the load cell. And then you've got two pickups for, um, 
for uh, uh, various uh, cells. So here's a block diagram of the chip. You can see the load cell here. You can see the output coming out here on these sides here. Uh, the output's going in. It's a differential uh, input into the chip, chip uh, in A plus, in A minus, which is just the differential input. And you're feeding a voltage to the um, to the excitation, the E plus, and E minus is just ground. So uh, this circuit up here is just a bias, a way to set the voltage to the load cell. And there's a formula of how to do it. And for the board I have, uh, this is what it works out to be. It's 1.76 uh, volts on feeding the load cell. Here's a schematic of, the, uh, of this board here. And it breaks out all the various components needed to make it work. Uh, where am I? Okay, so then I thought, okay, you know me, LT Spice. I thought, okay, let me do up a, 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 a bridge, a Wheatstone bridge in LT Spice. Here's my excitation, E plus and E minus. Here's my sense, S plus and S minus. And here's my voltage, E plus, E minus, which is just ground. And I, and I put in a resistance. I, instead of changing all the resistances, I just change one. Okay, so I make some measurements. Uh, I'm going to be talking about measurements when I go back, uh, when I talk about down the rabbit hole. And uh, so I'm measuring the average voltage. This is all DC. But I'm measuring the average voltage of uh, S plus and S minus. And then I'm measuring the difference between them. And uh, then I'm applying a gain. Oh, sorry. I, you know what? I didn't, I didn't talk about inside the chip here. Sorry, I missed this. So there's a mux that where you can mux between the two inputs, the in A and B, and that's controlled by I squared C. So you've got an I squared C interface and you could tell this chip, okay, I wanna read uh, the B channel or the A channel. That's fed to a variable gain amplifier, PGA, uh, and it's got three different values of gain. So it amplifies the input coming in, then it goes to 24-bit uh, sigma delta. Uh, ADC, which is measuring the differential uh, voltage, converting that to 24-bit 20, value, feeding it back to the microcontroller. So uh, where am I? So here in my uh, um, circuit here, I've got an analog gain of 128. So I'm taking my voltage difference I'm seeing across here, multiplying it by my analog gain of 128. Then I convert it to uh, ADC, which I'm multiplying by this ADC, which is a 24-bit um, uh, ADC, and that's just the voltage. I'm feeding it from here, 1.76 volts. So that's my resolution that I'm getting. So I multiply uh, that value by my ADC, and it's giving me my digital value. And... Uh, and then uh, my grams is I got my gain factor, uh, and that is going to convert the voltage, uh, that ADC value to a weight. And here you can see the outputs. There's the S plus, S minus, and you can see it's a very small difference between the two. Here I'm plotting it, and I've got a cursor. You can see it's 2.25 volts, and my calculation is showing the difference is, again, 2.25 volts, so 2.25 uh, millivolts. And I'm doing the various multiplications, and it's coming out to 600 grams. And I've got this SF just to show you how I arrived at that 457 value. If I take my ADC value, divide by 600, which is the weight I applied, then I get 457, which is this value. Is my, it, that's my gain. Anyway, just monkeying around with uh, uh, LT Spice. So um, I'm just going to... So I've just got a couple of slides here, two more slides. I'm just going to talk about how you could measure SWR with a Wheatstone bridge. And I think this will probably be of more interest to you guys than measuring thrust. So in this case, um, we assume the load is a purely resistive load because I think if you get any kind of a uh, complex uh, load here, any kind of imaginary, you've got uh, 
either uh, capacitive or inductive, this probably won't work as well. But if it's purely real, it'll work really well. And you can see you have two voltage dividers. So you've got your RS, your uh, source um, impedance coming in, your ZN uh, is RS, which I set to 50 ohms. And so I'm feeding it here. And you can see this is two voltage dividers. Here is 50 and 50. And here is 50 and my RL. Now, if RL is 50 ohms, then the difference between here should be zero. So in this simulation, I'm switching, I'm changing RL to go from 10 to 100 ohms in steps of 10. And uh, I am measuring here the difference between these two voltages here. And as you can see, sure enough, at step five, which is 50 ohms, it's zero. The voltage difference across here is zero. So that's, and you can see the voltage is ramping up on either side. So that's given me an indication that my SW is, uh, R is off, right? And then you can add in a detector to the circuit here and you could measure the voltage here. And a lot of times uh, I've seen um, this circuit here, they've got a, a meter. And that meter, I guess, it's like a dip. Once it goes to the lowest value, you know you're, uh, uh, you've matched R in, uh, Z in, and Z out. But again, I think this works well for real loads. I don't know how well it'll work if Z out has got any complex, any uh, imaginary uh, components. I don't think it's going to work very well. But here I'm uh, plotting the difference between V1 and V2. And again, at, five volt, at, at, five, at 50 ohms, you could see the value is really small. It's uh, what's that? 1.9 uh, microvolts. And here, measuring VSWR, which I'm just measuring the RMS value here with that statement there, and um, plotting it here. And you could see at step five, it's the minimum. It's the smallest value. And if you plot these values here, you could definitely start seeing a dip, like a SWR dip. Uh, the reason why it's here, it's because I stop at 100. If I went to like 200 or 300, this would climb back up and you'd get a nice uh, pra uh, parabola parabolic uh, curve. So that's it. Uh, any questions?